Amazing, thank you all. Um, for those of you that are at home uh, on this, you'll notice that every time the jazz quartet plays, I get up early because um, I clearly don't know how to follow jazz, so I think they're done and then they're not. Um, it's, it's lovely. Uh, Always amuses myself. I always feel like it, it, whenever you go to a jazz concert, you're supposed to be like, on the keys are, uh, but thank you all for amazing uh, gifts that you offer today uh, and you have over a while. So welcome uh, to church at um, um, First Presbyterian Church of Palo Alto. I'm glad you are here today, whether you're here in person or you're joining us on Zoom. We're grateful that you've taken uh, some time to be with us this morning. Um, you, as obviously, for those of you, uh, if you've heard this week that uh, I have uh, turned in and the session ex has accepted my uh, resignation, and I'll talk about that later in, in the service. Um, if you are just finding out today, apologies. We have sent out letters and emails and things, but uh, if this is the first you're hearing of it, um, again, apologies for not being able to have connected with people. Uh, I will talk a little bit about that later. Um, just want to be very clear that uh, this has nothing to do with anything that has or has not happened in this community. Um, there are people out there, maybe even within our community, that are going to try to figure out all the, like, what really happened, what's the real deal. Um, and as you will read from my letter, if you are uh, just hearing about it here in the sanctuary, there's letters in the back. Um, I have approached this with the same transparency and honesty that you have gotten to know me over the last three years. So there, is, there, are, there are no lines to read between. Um, there are certainly details that not everybody needs to know all the nitty gritty, but um, in, in my letter and as I will talk about today and in the next weeks, um, I hope to give you a little bit more um, breath to understand that. I also know that your, people are going to experience and react to this in a variety of ways. Uh, I may have no, um, I'm, I'm not going to promise you that it's all going to be rosy and sunshine in these next few weeks and months. Um, I also am um, uh, not going to promise you that uh, you won't be angry or sad or experience those kinds of emotions, but I also hope that you'll feel um, some gratitude and, and joy and hope as we move through these last weeks um, together. So um, again, I will talk about that a little more. So, um, but let's move on to more exciting parts about worship, the announcements, because that's always, I know folks uh, love announcements, but we got to do them. Um, so as, as always, we hope that you will subscribe to the back of the bulletin where um, especially now you'll get some announcements from session, from the uh, envisioning our future together task force, from me. It's a great place to kind of stay connected to what's happening. Follow us on the socials. We don't put everything out on our social media, but definitely uh, on our um, uh, in the back of the bulletin. Uh, also want to continue to remind you, we have free COVID tests, home COVID tests uh, that are in the Narthex, or you can um, grab them in the office. Seriously, take as many as you want. Just we have, I think, 600 still left. And so we really want to get them out into the community. Those came from the state. We just gave them, I said 900 and they're like, okay. So um, that's how we've been using them. Um, please take them. Um, there's a bunch of them sitting out in the, in the narthex there as you leave. Do not be shy about taking those tests. Um, and Lent continues. Uh, if you have not been able to join for uh, our Lenten midweek services, um, uh, jazz with Jonathan and Andy, please try to make one of those. It's really beautiful. Um, we're ending with the national anthem of Ukraine, uh, and it, uh, it's really just a, a break in your week from the weight of the world. I would encourage you to do that. Uh, hang out with Kelly, uh, who is leading our Sunday uh, afternoon Lenten groups at four o'clock. You can find that in your back of the bulletin. And soon, uh, at next, next week, we'll tell you about Monday, Thursday, and Easter. Easter, at this point, we're planning on fully being here uh, inside music. We'll start a half an hour, so 9.30 on Easter, kind of the traditional lots of music beforehand, so I encourage you to come to that. Next week is the garden party, uh, which is really exciting. We'll hear, I think we're going to hear more about that in a little bit later on the service, but um, if you haven't gone out to look, it, it's just kind of barren now, but there's going to be, the monarchs are going to, we're going to be a stop through, like a rest stop for the monarch migration. I really don't know anything about the science, but that's what's going to happen, is the butterflies are going to come through, eat, and then move on, I think is what happens. Um, and then uh, 
there is a crop walk. Um, for those of you that know about crop walk, it's a, a church world service. So churches from all over the world um, gather together. Usually it's for hunger. Um, they are putting a, together a special crop walk for Ukraine and for um, looking at how um, people can raise money um, and support for folks from Ukraine, refugees and others. Uh, if you're interested in that and helping to organize our team, uh, Cindy Chinley is the person to contact. You can contact the office. And lastly, uh, after worship today, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Um, knowing that this is the first Sunday after my announcements, um, the Envisioning Our Future Together Task Force, uh, if you are on Zoom, uh, Edie is going to um, break you up into groups uh, at the end of worship. I forgot to tell Matthew about this, but Matthew, you're not breaking people up into groups? Okay, thank you. They already took care of it. Um, so Edie will do that. You'll break into your small groups. If you are here, and you wanna just hang out to, together with each other. I think Sally and Karen are here, um, and you'll just kind of gather over here. I will not be in any of those groups. We wanna give folks just a time to process and to share. Uh, we know this is, um, for some of you, or most of you, it's come as a surprise, um, but hopefully um, you'll have some time to, to process that before you engage with me. Um, so that will happen. All right, so, um, as a reminder, life, worship, this will not be perfect, especially when we're trying to do this hybrid thing. We got a bunch of you on Zoom, uh, and then a growing number of people are here in person, which is lovely. A um, few reminders for you as you, for you are on Zoom. Um, the video, if you're, especially if you're visiting with us, uh, feel free to use your video or not use your video, totally up to you. F use the chat freely. Uh, that is a place where people interact a lot. Um, and uh, whatever, if you want to turn on your closed captioning, you can do that as well. We do record the whole service, uh, everything except for the chat. Uh, and, this, and that goes on YouTube. And then the sermon goes on Instagram and our podcast. Uh, if you are singing at home, uh, we would ask you to remain muted. Uh, so sing boldly um, without sound. Uh, and then we have tech deacons that are there to kind of ask questions and uh, help with you. If you are here today, welcome. Um, always on the back of the bulletin, we have a bunch of things about the um, about the bulletin, about um, what's happening here. The change for that happened on Wednesday is we are now going to follow uh, Santa Clara County uh, guidelines around mask wearing. So, um, you can, uh, it's optional, We st like the county does, we encourage uh, you to continue to mask, but uh, it is optional. We've never checked vaccination status here or anything like that. Um, we are still asking you to, to, if you're gonna sing, to do with your mask on, and we will continue to adapt and adjust as we can. But just generally speaking, your masks inside are now optional. Um, and then uh, just honor people's distancing. I think that's, you know, you see the little markers, just honor how, where everybody's comfort level is around all this. Oh my goodness, last one, simple service, no bulletin, uh, especially if you are visiting with us, you don't have to download anything. Uh, if you're online and there's, there's the bulletin in the back that gives you a little map. Uh, you join in on the bold readings that will come up. Carolyn and I are leading today. Uh, and later on, uh, Zoom people, you'll be, offered, you'll be asked to in, uh, offer prayers. You just use your little raise hand uh, response. And then here, you can come up to the front when that time comes. And then we will share in communion as we do every week. So uh, if you um, are at home, go grab whatever is around. Uh, food, drink, bring that. If you are here, uh, there are little uh, communion things here. There's some here. Um, or I know some of you are bringing your own elements, which I think is awesome. Uh, so you will have in communion later. All right, that's all the announcements. Uh, we're gonna begin our time as we do with three minutes of silence, which I know we don't get very often uh, during the day. And for some of us who move at about 150 miles an hour, uh, three minutes feels like a really long time, but it's good to do. Simply listen to your breath, um, some people say a word as they inhale and another word as they exhale. Um, but I'll ring a chime. We'll spend three minutes for us to just acknowledge the land that we are upon um, and any um, things that we need to kind of let go of as we enter this space. So let's take some time for silence.
Good morning. Listen now to a poem. Sometimes I wish I was the fig tree. No fruit here, just soaking up the sun, growing roots, turning green, stretching out my branches until I can hug the horizon. Sometimes I wish I was the fig tree because she doesn't produce and she's not exhausted and she probably gets eight hours of sleep at night. And her branches, unlike my shoulders, are not heavy with work, pulled toward the ground, threatening to break. And her trunk, unlike my spine, is not fighting to stand tall while holding it all together. Sometimes I wish I was the fig tree because she knows what I forgot many years ago. You are still worthy, even if you don't produce. Amen. Reminder, all the lit, lit leaves we're using, we've adapted from a group called Sanctified Arts, which has just been amazing. And that um, song there is written by Paul Demmer, who's a musician uh, in uh, our denomination. Um, it's lovely. Uh, we now join in our confession and assurance. In our tradition, we believe that we often bring things into the space that hold us back from experiencing God, both individually and as a body. Uh, sometimes we don't even know. Um, and is which is the, the sinister nature of brokenness in the world. And so we confess that together, and then we do so just a few moments of silence. Um, you'll join Caroline and I in the confession. Uh, again, Caroline will read the non-blank or bold part, and you'll join with me in singing, saying, saying the bold. So please join me in our um, confession and assurance. Holy God, we treat our self-worth like something that can be bought at a store. But you know this even better than we do. Instead of trusting that we are made good, instead of trusting that we are loved exactly as we are, we stockpile our value in earthly things, in trophies and awards, in likes and follows, in wealth and power. Forgive us for creating our own measuring stick. Heal our open wounds and tell our hearts that we won't be forgotten if we slow down. We won't be forgotten if we rest. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Let's just take a few moments for silent personal confession.
now let us receive and offer the peace that Christ offers us. Friends, take a deep breath. Release the tension in your jaw. There is good news here. For even when we stumble, even when we take the easy way out, even when we forget our own self-worth, even when we lose our way, we belong to God. Say it with me. We are loved, we are claimed, we are under God's wing. We are worthy of grace, we belong to God. Amen. So now we pass that same peace to one another and we have developed a way to do that. It's a little chaotic, but beautiful here at uh, uh, this congregation over this time. So those of you that are on Zoom, you're gonna pop up in gallery here. Feel free to sc scroll through and uh, pass the peace with one another. And those of us in this space, feel free to stand as you are comfortable and pass the peace, elbows, hugs, whatever you are comfortable with. And we'll do that for a few min minutes. So let's uh, pass the peace of Christ to one another. Peace. Hey, peace, everybody. Yeah. Hi, Edie. Oh. Hi, Diana. Linda. Hi, Vida. Good to see you. Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi, Suki. Hi, Karen. Hi, Mary. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Linda. Hi, Lee. Shirley. Hi, Gail. Hi, Alice. Hi, Dave. Hi, Linda. Hi, Pat. Greg, I love the pig. The book was upside down. Hey, Hi, Darren. Good morning, Hi, Jess. Hi, Edie. I see you, Edie. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Edie. Hi, 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 Don. Hi, Chuck. Hi, Don. Hi, Marjorie. <laughs> Cynthia, good morning. Hi, Mary Ellen. Hi, Mary Ellen. Scotty, glad you could be Mary with us. Hi, Don. Good morning, Pippa. Oh, and Linda, too. <laughs> Hi, Marjorie. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Derek. Hi, Mary Alice. Diana. Hi, Evan. Hi, Dave. No, I can oh, see. Hi. Hi, Susan. Let's go ahead and gather back. <laughs> uh, we'll give you a few moments for folks to get back. <laughs> All of us inside, we haven't like seen each other and like we're actually wanting to Pack, yeah. get together. So, um, how many uh, people is, are there? It's lovely. I would, um, I encourage you as you feel comfortable, those of you on Zoom, um, stop by sometime on a Sunday. Uh, it would be great to see some faces in here. We don't, we know that folks' patterns and habits have shifted, but it is lovely to, to actually be in the same space. So as you feel comfortable, obviously. Well, there was just a tiny tip of it out. We'll now hear our scripture reading from Caroline. I think they, close, they mute everybody. Well, they do, but. I don't think they are. A reading from Luke, chapter 13, verses one through nine. About that time, some people came up and told him about the Galileans that Pilate had killed while they were at worship mixing their blood with the blood of the sacrifices on the altar. Jesus responded, do you think those murdered Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans? Not at all. Unless you turn to God, you too will die. And those 18 in Jerusalem the other day, the ones crushed and killed when the tower of Siloam collapsed and fell on them, do you think they were worse citizens? than all other Jerusalemites? Not at all. Unless you turn to God, you too will die. Then he told them a story. A man had an apple tree planted in his front yard. He came to it expecting to find apples, but there weren't any. He said to his gardener, what's going on here? For three years now, I've come to this tree expecting apples and not one apple have I found. Chop it down. Why waste good ground with it any longer? The gardener said, let's give it another year. I'll dig around it and fertilize, and maybe it will produce next year. If it doesn't, then chop it down. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, for the spirit that is in this place and the spirit that gathers us, uh, beyond boundary, beyond border, and beyond building, we give you thanks. We ask that that spirit be in this place to soothe our tender souls, uh, to lift up the pain and grief that we may experience from the weight of the world, 
but also to see joy and new life around us. For we are a resurrection people, always knowing that there is hope, and good news, and new life. We thank you again for this time and for those in this space, for those who are, are able to gather together, whether it be here or afar. We are one body, one body of Christ this day. May that same spirit guide the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts, so they're acceptable to you. We pray all this in the name of Christ and God's people say, Amen. So this is one of those passages that you begin, it's not a cheery beginning, right? All we're hearing about are people dying and if you don't turn towards God, you're gonna die. Like that, that is not probably your first go-to scripture that you think of when people talk to you about your faith. You're not like, well, turn to God or you're gonna die, right? That's, that's the kind of uh, uh, rhetoric and the tone that we don't like to um, share out in the world. In fact, we know how dangerous that can be so one way to think about it, right, is to just think about it. it's all metaphorical, it's all... The other is to say that in, there are times where we as humans were, um, you know, we, we, we um, recorded some of the terribleness of that time. And I don't think we have to think it's metaphorical because we can see the same things happening today, right? I mean, it's not as if we can say, gosh, how barbaric were the biblical times when we can turn on the news today and see terrible things happening to people, things that we thought, hoped we were beyond. We know that there is also continued violence and continued pain and struggle that doesn't make the news, that doesn't make our social media threads. We know that there are things happening just in this community within a few miles as well as around the world where people are dying and there is pain and people are inflicting violence upon one another and causing death. So I don't wanna sugarcoat this beginning part of this passage because I think what we are hearing is that we can't get into this idea that we're gonna start ranking how bad things are. We can't start getting into this, well, it's really bad here, it's not bad here, or at least I don't do that, right? I think sometimes we get into this, this danger of, well, you know, I'm, I did this little thing, but at least I'm not out there doing these terrible things because Jesus is reminding us that the actions in themselves is not what gives us worth. The actions in itself are not what happens, um, how God connects to us or loves us. The, the action that we have to be concerned about as people of faith, as people who believe in God, as people who believe in this person of Christ, is to claim Christ, God's ownership um, claim over us. And that that is what we are measured upon. We're not measured upon the, the good or bad acts that we do. And this is where it comes to being Presbyterian. Uh, here's your just slightly, if, um, I know many of you didn't grow up Presbyterian. We always get a bad rap for a couple of things as Presbyterians. One, we're called the frozen chosen, right? We're called because we're easy to tease about just like it's emotion is bad and we just sit and we look ahead and we, right? Now, clearly there is some truth to that in context, but for the most part, we are like, we are not as frozen as I think we like to tease ourselves about. Certainly here, that is not the case. Um, yesterday, we had a memorial here for, uh, for Holly Newman and everybody was so worried about um, what they did and where they put the flowers and where things went. And I'm like, yeah, you can put them whatever, wherever. I'm like, really? I'm like, yeah, it's fine. You can put them anywhere. It's your memorial. Right, so I don't think that that's really a true one. But the other thing that we get a lot of, uh, uh, we get pushed back on is this thing called predestination, right? We get pushed on, well, if everything's predestined, then why bother? Well, that's one way to think about it. The other way is to think about it is God loves us and there's nothing we can do about that because God has already said to us, I claim you, I choose you, you are worthy. And so there's actually nothing that you can do to separate me from you. So our job is not to try to earn God's love, earn God's presence, but it is to respond with gratitude to what God has already promised us. That's how I look at this predestination thing is I don't, I don't use it to be like, well, I'm already in, too bad for you. 
It's more like, ah, God loves me now and for eternity. I don't know what that's going to look like, but how can I not live in the world in gratitude to that? So what we hear in this story is a, a, a negative version of that. It's almost like it, it doesn't matter if you kill and mix the offering blood and all that kind of stuff. It matters how you understand God in your life and how you are worthy and loved by God. The passage you get, you usually have heard it as a fig tree, and that's how we've normally heard it, but um, a more uh, clear translation is of an apple tree. I don't think that changes anything other than I like apples more than I like figs. But you hear this story often, right? This is one of the um, probably most anti-American exceptionalism stories in the Bible. Because we are a country and a culture that believes that meritocracy is the primary thing. And, you know, we can have lots of discussions about, I think, the myth of meritocracy. Have that conversation with my kids. It is a, amazing conversations to have as they move through college. But, you know, in, in, the, in, in American culture, in broad way of speaking, right, you are valued by what you produce. If you're not producing then why are you here? And that trickles down to so many ways in which we look at our culture and our communities. We look at elderly folks in the United States and how we treat those who are perceived to be beyond any productive way of life, how we understand and talk about what it means to get older and how we begin to believe this myth that as you get older, you become less and less valuable as opposed to as we get older, our value shifts. I think we do the same thing with children. Like, wh what are they producing? Apparently we're not allowed to make them work. Like, we don't do that anymore. So what are they producing? So we, 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 def we don't fund education. We look at young people as a burden. We look at those teachers and educators who tend and shape and nurture our young people, and we don't support them. But we value this idea that you should generate some kind of something. There should be a deliverable. There should be some productivity. If, if you're not delivering something or producing something, then you are not worthy. And we buy into that. We buy into this what many call toxic productivity where all our worth is, is based on what we can hand into someone or, or what we can do to make a profit, all of those things. So this passage itself goes against a lot of what happens in this community around here, especially this idea that, that our worth is bound in our productivity and what we can produce. I think that's a, it's a dangerous question to ask ourselves because I think intellectually we would all like to say, no, I don't, I don't get my worth from what I produce. I don't get my worth from my wealth or my power. But it's really hard when you begin to ask that question and decide that that is actually going to be true for you. Because what it means is we get to give away and, 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 and uh, you know, kind of deposit in, uh, these ideas that everything we do is about producing something. You know, you talk about things like grind culture. Just get through it, power through it. Grind, grind, grind. And then you earn your wealth, your, your rest, and all of the things that you're supposed to earn because you've been productive. As opposed to, let's be healthy, rested people so that we can be better members of society. I didn't pick this passage. We um, didn't write this liturgy knowing that this was going to be the Sunday after I announced that I would be leaving. But as we looked at it, I'm like, man, right? This idea that you are worthy speaks to us in both to me individually, to you as a congregation, and to us over the last three years of what we have done together. Let me begin with just how I uh, read this passage and have, how I have uh, begun to think about my own calling and things over uh, the last um, three years um, in particular, but just in general as we move into a new way of being in the world. 
I am uh, on an, in an Enneagram what is called a, a three. And those of you that are Enneagram people, uh, threes are what are called uh, achievers. Uh, threes are uh, called achievers, they're called performers. Uh, they nickname us little human doings rather than human beings. Um, our, uh, uh, for Enneagram people, every uh, number, there's nine numbers, has a, a virtue and a vice. So virtues of a three, um, we can bring people along with ideas. Uh, we can move towards something and uh, folks will kind of gravitate into that space and that path. And then we accomplish good things together. The vice is, for a three is deceit. Not that we lie, but we start, we lie to ourselves about our worth and that our worth is determined by what we accomplish. The United States is a three country, uh, as I just talked about. I'm the kind of person that um, I love lists uh, so I can check them off. If I have a, if you were to look at my little pad here, I have a bunch of to-dos. And uh, if I do something that's not on the list, I add it to the list and then I check it off. Um, Robin's here and she's like, oh, good Lord, yes. Uh, but yeah, so I, I like to have things in order. I like to plan out ahead of time in our household. My common question is, so what's the plan? And Robin will often say, there is no plan. And it'll be okay. My kids are like, there's no plan, Dad. But how can there not be a plan? Because how do you check things off if there's no plan? Right? So that's my natural place to be. And I will say, there are... Uh, really great parts about that and help to move communities. And I, I think it, it helps in many ways. But it also, when I begin to trick myself into thinking that the more things I can check off, the better I am as a person, that's when it becomes dangerous. And then I start just frenzying out. If I can just do more things, then it's going to be okay. So one of the things that I've learned about myself is that I no longer need to do that for myself. I no longer need to um, be that person that is continually checking off boxes as some sort of accomplishment to gain my worth. I no longer have to buy into this idea that I have to sacrifice my own health in order to, to do things that I would love to be able to do and would bring accomplishment and accolade and movement and joy, would bring good things. But in this world of grind culture, I'm having to step away from that idea. So in my letter, I talk about some health stuff, and I, you don't need to know all the details. But part of the reason that I've chosen to leave is that my health is not good. It's not dire, but I don't think we wait until it's dire in order to make decisions. I've had health scares in my life, as some of you know. I've, you know, 17 years ago, I, was, I almost died of pancreatitis. I was one, you know, just six months ago, seven months ago, I was in the hospital for, with COVID. You know, I've had those experiences. And so when I tell folks, I really am, the, the impetus for my leaving is a choice about my own health. That is completely true. And what I am doing in that is I'm saying to my own spirit, my own mind, my own soul, I am worthy. And that that is not something that we are taught by the church and by culture very often. We are, we, are cho we are taught often that you are not worthy because you are not producing. And therefore, you should let your body, mind, and spirit at all costs grind down until you can do no more. Or there's some kind of crisis that forces you into decisions. And I'm hoping that what you hear in this decision for me is permission for yourself as well. To be able to know when you need to say to yourself, I'm worthy and I am not about having to earn my worth from God. God has already said to me, I am worthy. So this decision for me in many ways was started because of the difficult, which shouldn't be a difficult decision, to say to God and myself, I'm worthy. I also want to say to you, 
I've known you for three years now, and we still have time together, so this is not my last sermon with you, that you are worthy as a congregation. I've gotten to know your hurts and your pains, your joys and your celebrations, gotten to inkling into your deep DNA for justice and, and what we have done together is, is, I think, some good things. I've gotten to know some of you more deeply than others. I've gotten to know um, about your families, your, your, your greatest joys and hobbies, as well as some of the things that have been difficult in your lives. I've gotten to know this congregation in many ways just as a regular church. You are unique, but you're not special because we are just people who are gathered together. And my leaving is not reflect upon your worth at all. In fact, I hope that what you will see is that your worth is even greater now than maybe it was bef before we started. That you understand yourselves as a church that is worthy of leadership that can be completely in this space. That your worth is about being loved as people and as a community. That you are worthy of this challenge that God has placed in this particular place to be what I believe a unique space of justice and faith in the world. It may not feel like we've produced much over these last three years. If I were to be old Bruce 20 years ago, I'd be like, well, no new members joined while you were here. You didn't baptize anybody while you were here. All the numerical things would say, gosh, Bruce, hmm, not very productive. But I hope that you all don't see that. I hope you see what I see. We made it through this pandemic and we just didn't survive. Like we have managed to be community through a time when we know communities, not just in the church, but all over are breaking down. You all didn't call me here to be your online pastor, but some reason we found ourselves in the same space and we're able to kind of shift into this new way of being church. That is super worthy. I hope that as you have experienced my leadership, that maybe you have experienced a new way of, of seeing pastoral leadership in this space, that you have seen a way of talking about faith in a new way that you've been invigorated. I hope that we have laughed enough together, that we have wept together, that we have experienced being community at the depth and the rawness of what it means to be church. I hope that over our three years, we have said to one another, beyond the trappings of productivity, that we together are worthy of God's love. Nothing takes away from that. Nothing will say to us, gosh, we did, this was some kind of failure. We didn't do something right. Please, as much as you can, let that part go. Know that in our last few years, that has both gone by in a just quickly, and for many of us, because of the pandemic, has also felt like a long time. I've actually gotten a lot more grayer, I think, in the three years. That all of that time is worthy. I hope that you will think about our time now, in the next weeks, after I'm gone, whatever that may be, and remember this as a good time. A time where we planted some soil and we, we churned it up and we planted some things and we made sure that it was going to be good. A time where I hope your faith was, has been expanded as mine has. A time where we've dove, dived deep into some areas theologically and politically and socially that maybe we hadn't before. Uh, you have grown in body, mind, and spirit. And above all, that you have felt loved. Not just by God, but by me and one another. For God's love and worthiness is expressed in how we show that to one another. So, 
I make, again, I know there are going to be times that it is going to be rough. I promise you that there will be some rough times and there will be some frustration and not knowing what's going to happen and you're going to wonder and you might have moments of being mad at me or sad or all of those things all at the same time. But never forget that part of what we believe in this space is that God will love us no matter what. That God says to us, I have already told you that you are worthy. It's our job now to believe it. It's our job to believe it and to live it. So I hope as you move through the world, this church, this community is a significant part for many of you, but you also live in a world that is heavy. There are things going on around the world and you're probably in your life and in your communities that are demanding of you more than you can give when you feel like you are giving up your worth to those things, please choose to claim your worthiness from God. In this congregation, when you begin to really worry about your future, when you begin to struggle and find conflict and tension about what is next, please know that you are loved by God. And together, as I move into whatever is next, as you move into whatever is next, I hope that we will remember that our time together has expanded our understanding of that worth that God has placed upon us. Again, we have time together. I know for many this feels like it's gonna go really quickly and it's a short time, but I wanna say a couple of things to end. You all are gonna be taken care of by your session and you're envisioning our future task force. I know that this time frame of me being gone by the end of April seems really fast. B but the reality is you all haven't had a, a regular pastoral transition here in a very long time. And a regular normal pastoral transition is actually shorter than six weeks. It's often a month. So while I know it feels very fast, I do not want you to, to stop feeling feels. Trust a denomination and our history, and I hope me, to say that we've found the best way to be able to make this transition happen. Also know that part of my role in this time is to end well with you. Our legacy will be tied up in these three years together, but a bigger part of that for this church will be in how we say goodbye and how we end our time. And lastly, let me just say a couple of things people already asked me. Where are you going next? Do you have another job? I do not. <laughs> there is nothing lying on, in wait. Uh, there is nothing happening that is, uh, I, I, you know, uh, normally speaking, right? That's a valid question. Normally, Bruce, the planner, I would already know where I'm going. I am giving myself the gift of not knowing. Now, you can believe that or not, um, but that is the truth. And lastly, let me say this. As a planner, as a person who moves quickly and likes to get things done, my gift to both of us, to this church and to myself, is to be really present with you over these next six weeks. Next week, I have a study leave time, and come April, we're just gonna hang out together. I wanna meet with as many of you as possible. We can grab coffee, we can hop on Zoom, whatever you wanna do, I'm gonna be present with you so that we say goodbye well. And then I will be gone and somebody will come in and be able to be in that space with you. We don't know what that's gonna look like, but trust that there are folks who will love you again and again and again that we have a unique experience that we will hold on to. I don't deny that. I have loved you as you have loved me and Robin, but you will continue to be loved by your pastors. I believe that, I trust that, and I hope you will know that. So we begin another phase of our journey together, which is a journey of farewell. It's a journey of transition, but it's a journey that God will be present with I hope as God has been present with us thus far. When we can honor that, 
then we honor the worthiness that God has bestowed upon us. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this time and for the ways in which you gather us in the seasons of life. We ask, oh God, that you would continue to be with us. Be with each of us as we wrestle with the worthiness of our individual lives and this particular church. We know you do love us. Help us to believe that at the core of our souls. We thank you for that time, for this time, and for the time to come. We proud this in the name of Christ and God's people say, amen. We now will um, have our affirmation of faith, which we've been doing during Lent, which are um, just beautiful liturgies written by Sanctified Arts. So you'll join um, uh, Caroline and I again. Caroline will read the, the unbolded and I will read the bold. So let's join together in saying our affirmation of faith. We believe that the God of the cosmos is at work here. We believe that God is fertilizing the soil. We believe that God is planting roots. We believe that God is growing fruit that is yet to be tasted. But until that promised day, when the fig tree stands tall and swords are beaten into plowshares, we believe. When our work does not bear fruit, God still loves us. When our soil grows dry and cracked, God still longs for us. When all seems hopeless here on earth, God holds hope for us all. The God of the cosmos is at work here. We believe, help our unbelief, amen. So let's join in singing our response hymn, God of grace and God of glory. today. As you know, Elliot is attending uh, a funeral of his aunt in England this weekend. But thank you, Joe, for uh, bringing your gifts uh, to this space as always. Uh, we now move into a time of offering and our prayers and communion as we end our time together. Um, so uh, as you have been so generous over these last three years uh, with 
you know, all the things that have been going on, uh, we ask you to continue to be generous and support the work of the church and the ministry now and into the future here. Uh, if you are online, there'll be links in the chat you can give online. Uh, if you're here, there's a bowl in the back there you can uh, drop your offering into and we'll get that into the office. Um, and then uh, I think, so, is there somebody giving an announcement about the butterfly garden? Does that sound familiar? Is there anybody on Zoom jumping, raising their hand at all? Okay, I will do so then. Um, we hope next week you will go, you'll be here. I'm not going to be here next week to be with you, but be, come at one to four, right, Sally? One to four, butterfly garden. Uh, you're going to, you can bring a trowel and get your hands dirty. Apparently that's what you, I'm not a gardener, so I, I, is that a trowel that you bring? Um, so a trowel and there's gonna be compost and dirt and they're gonna plant things. Uh, so come for that one to four. I think there's gonna be refreshments as well. So please come and see uh, a bunch of the uh, uh, youth uh, and uh, young at heart have been building that garden uh, along with Kelly, who will probably talk about it next week, um, uh, have been supporting that. So please come to that. Um, and then, so, uh, that's the offering. Next up, we're going to have special music with the jazz quartet, and then we'll do our prayers and communion. So let's go ahead and, and welcome back um, our jazz quartet.
Amen. Amen. Now it's time where we move into our prayers of the people time. And uh, so I'll, lift, I'll first lift up a few prayers that have come just from, for our community. Uh, and then I'll turn it over to uh, Cindy, I think is on uh, prayers today on Zoom. And Cindy will call on you. So if you're on Zoom, use your raise hand um, reaction at the bottom so she can find you or flail your hands about and we'll lift your prayers. And then we'll come back here. And if you have any prayers, we'll have you just come up to um, uh, that a tablet there and we'll move the mic over there for you for your prayers. Um, we do want to continue to pray for uh, healing for Trish Hollenbeck uh, who had a procedure last week. We want to continue to lift up her recovery and we are also continual every week we will continue to pray for Marvin Lamphere uh, and for his family for comfort and peace for his body mind and spirit um, and thankfully for this community who has been over to visit um, uh, to visit Marvin. If you are interested in visiting with Marvin, please let us know. Um, and then prayers of Thanksgiving. Uh, some of you on Zoom, you are seeing Mary Alice and Dave Thornton who are joining us now on Zoom from Channing House. So that is lovely to see. Uh, hopefully some of us have been able to see them as well. So continued uh, healing uh, for Mary Alice, rest for Dave uh, and for their entire family. All right, so I'm gonna turn it over to Cindy and uh, we'll get prayers from the Zoom community. Okay, uh, I see a, a yellow hand for Derek. Go ahead, Derek. Actually, Derek and Craig just wanted oh, to put it put up my protest. <laughs> Puppets united against Bruce leaving. That's it. But we love you. <laughs> okay. Um, you're. Uh, you can raise your yellow hand by looking under the reactions at the bottom, the smiley face with a plus on its head has that, if you're wondering where that is. Next is uh, Susan Chamberlain. Go ahead. Well, I have two prayers today. Uh, the first is for our congregation and for Bruce. For Bruce, um, as he navigates this next chapter of his life, and for our congregation. Um, that we hold each other and that God holds us. And on a lighter note, I have um, prayers uh, for um, Jesse's baby, who's due in a couple of weeks. And she's on this call today, if people want to leave a note in the chat. Um, so prayers for a smooth delivery for her, for a healthy baby boy, and that there be showers of blessings on this new life. Thank you, Susan. Uh, let's see, don't see any more yellow hands. Let's see if there are any waving hands. Not seeing any. Okay. Barring that, Bruce, it's your... We see oh, wait, uh, uh, wait, 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 Jeff. Shirley and Jeff, go ahead. <laughs> um. I would like to give thanks for Bruce's tenure here. Um, it's really been great having him and uh, for all that he has done for the church. Thank you, Jeff. It's like another round for waving hands. Okay. Oh, there's Evan. Go ahead, Evan. Uh, yes. Um, Good news, I got a contact from my grandson, Kyle, at the time of my birthday this past Monday, and uh, it, 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 may, it may be that he'd been in touch with his father also, and uh, that's why he remembered my birthday. Anyway, I was very pleased to have this uh, reaction from him. He's, he's been in the Army since uh, August and hasn't been in touch for the last uh, couple months. <laughs> I still don't know where he's stationed. <laughs> Thank you, Evan. Um, let's see. All righty. I can speak to you, Bruce. All right. Uh, any prayers want to lift up here in the sanctuary? Feel free to come on up to the microphone there and uh, you can go, go ahead, uh, Jim, go for it. Yep. If Leo will move out of the way for you there. <laughs> I think I'm a stubborn soul. There's something I've been wanting to do for a 
quite a while and I'm having stubbornness in doing this. I think back to when I was in college and, and things I was doing there, words like hoarding, something I don't want to do, so I'm, I'm trying to move in a different direction. I'm asking your help with that. Great, thank you, Jim. We'll pray for your continued movement and in, in this thing that you've been working on. So thank you, Jim. All right, other prayers you want to lift up from the sanctuary? All right, I'm going to close with prayer, then we'll have communion as we end our time together. Let us pray. God, for um, the ways in which we gather in this space and gather as community, we give you thanks. We ask, oh God, that you would continually hold our deepest pains and struggles, the deepest parts of us that are hurting for others and the empathy that you have gifted us with, but also the deep pains that we may have in our own bodies, our minds, and our spirits, the pain that our families may be experiencing, our communities, and certainly the world. And in the midst of that, let us also know that there is joy to be found, that surprisingly sometimes our hearts still sing. We ask that you would remind us of those moments, both in the minutia of the day and in the magnificence of the world that you may show us over and over again that we are worthy. For you have done this throughout time. You have brought the one who has taught us how to walk through the world in the personhood of Christ. We ask, O oh God, that you will continue to do that now and into the future. And it is in the name of Christ that we gather and we pray together, saying our prayer of Jesus, Our creator in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. All right, as we end our time, I encourage you and invite you to share in communion. There's communion things all around if you haven't grabbed yours. Um, the awkwardness of communion and our um, communion elements. Again, just if you are here for the first time in, on site, uh, there's two peely things. Uh, one gets you the wafer, the second one gets you the juice. Um, I ask you to hold on to the wafer, uh, and then we'll do them together at the same, uh, at, at the same time. Um, it is not the most elegant way to have communion, I know. But actually, it doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't really matter how we have communion. It could be goldfish and Diet Coke. It could be pancakes and coffee. It could be, and these are all of the things that I've seen people do. So, right, it could be whatever because it's the food of the people. It was people gathered at a table being fed by the Holy One. So as fun as these are to make fun of as little Lunchables, it is simply the feast of God for the people of God. So Jesus took the bread, he took the bread and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to them, and he said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Every time you do it, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins, that every time you drink of it, you do this in remembrance of me. For every time that we eat of this bread, no matter what it looks like, and we drink of this cup, no matter from what it's poured, that these, this is the, the feast of God, of the kingdom of God, for God's people who are worthy of it. Take, eat, my friends. This is the feast. Let us pray. God, for the many ways in which you feed us, body, mind, and spirit, we give you thanks. Let it know that it doesn't matter in which form, 
It doesn't matter how fast, it doesn't matter in the ways in which things happen, that you feed us every day from first breath to the feast that we have just partaken in. And for this, we give you thanks. We thank you for this feast. Let us remember that it nourishes us always. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. Again, as we leave this place, um, uh, and, and I'll share with you our benediction in a minute, you're invited. If you are on Zoom, uh, Edie has probably already divided you up into some small groups, uh, and we'll take over and, and move you into those groups, and you'll be facilitated by members of the Envisioning Our Future Together Task Force, um, just to have some time to check in with each other. Um, we know that this has been a tough week, and wanting to just give some space for that. I obviously will not be in those spaces, so hopefully you'll have some freedom to, to share um, and then here, if you are in this space, we'll just say you'll gather over in this corner. Oh, actually, let's put you in this corner over here uh, while they're breaking down. So you'll be over here. Um, Karen and Sally will just hang out over here. I'm going to go hang out in the, in the patio and be around for a little bit. So feel free to hang out. Just check in with each other if you choose to do that. Um, and then I'll be outside on the patio as well. If you are not able to stay with us, we are so glad that you, um, you are either here in this space um, or that you joined us on Zoom. This is a lovely community. Um, it was before I got here. It has been while I've been here, and it will continue to be so. So I'm glad that you have been able to join us today. Your benediction is our Lenten benediction from uh, um, the Sanctified Arts, and it is beautiful. We're using it on Sundays and on Wednesdays. As you leave this place, may you be awestruck by the beauty of this world. May you laugh and may it be contagious. May you overflow with love for those around you. May you be effusive with hope and quick to point out joy. And in all your living and breathing and being, may you find yourself full to the brim with God's Holy Spirit and may it change your life. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, go in peace, full to the brim. Amen. We'll hear a, prayer, a postlude from um, the quartet, and then you can, we'll break you up into your groups. Go in peace. <laughs>
I'm about ready to move people into breakout groups.